one. Well, the next in our series of topical talks uh, takes uh, steps away from the environment, in fact, and focuses on what can only be described as a good idea and certainly an ambition. And there is, of course, that well-known saying that there's a book in everyone. And in Leslie Sainty's uh, case, that certainly is the case and is true. Um, uh, Taking the Waters is Leslie's first book set in her hometown of Cheltenham in 1827. And it's based on real characters whose names we will be familiar with today. So hi there, Leslie. Hello. Thanks for having me. Good. Very well. It's a pleasure. Nice to see you. So let's talk about the book, shall we? And uh, without giving anything away, can you give us a sort of uh, thumbnail sketch of of the plot and what's involved? Yes. So as you say, it's... um... A historical fiction set in 1827 in Regency Cheltenham and um, Alice, our heroine Alice Elliot, comes to stay in the town for the spa season. Um, she's all alone in the world um, and she comes to live near her friendly solicitor, Mr Walter and his wife. And she, um, again, like you say, it's, it's based on real places and characters and events from the time. Um, mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's heavily based on 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 fact, but I, 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 you know, as I say, it's a fiction, so it's all um, maybe some of the dates and, and some of the places weren't put together and um, art- artistic licenses used, but it, it's very much based on, a, on dramatic events that happened in, at the time and she's torn between a world of the worlds of pleasure and pleasure and excess and religion and charity, which is um, which is, is 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 quite you know it was quite a dramatic sort of split at the time in the town. So it's an adult read, is it? It's not not a not a ch- ch- children's book. No, there are some there are some adult um, sections in it to, to, to sort of provide a bit of titivation, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's heavily based on on history. It doesn't really sort of fit into any any neat genre so it's not necessarily sort of a regency romance you know I've, I've definitely read a few regency romances and enjoy them myself but I think it, it's very much sort of um, appealing to people who've perhaps lived in Cheltenham all their lives and mm. you know the, the people who've really loved it have really appreciated the history being sort of brought alive um, of course you can get non-fiction books on history in Cheltenham and I've read most of them doing my research for this but all, I just felt like making it more more accessible and just um just something I just felt that hadn't been done before or or explored and I find it fascinating so I just enjoyed I loved every minute of it and um you know so that's if no one that's else that. liked it's it a, I, I enjoyed it it must be a very it, you know I'm full of admiration for you because it's a brave step I mean it's your first book uh, you, you run a business, you know, you've got family mm. and all the rest of it, you know. So, you know, what tipped you over the edge when you actually said, right, I'm going to do it and I'm going to spend the time and do the research and, and all the rest of it. Was there one particular moment or did it just sort of creep up on you? Um, I, I guess it crept up because I'd been I'd started writing some articles for Cotswold Life magazine um, on, on mainly on Cheltenham history. And I just felt like there was just more. And every time I... I sort of stumbled across some interesting facts on Cheltenham history. I just had to get to the bottom of it and research it. So I was doing all this research and and then um, I came across this, uh, you know, the Cheltenham races history and and, and the, the sermon by the Reverend Francis Close, who who actually preached a sermon called the, um, the Evils of the Race Course Exposed. And I just felt so uh, overwhelmed by it. It was just so passionate and and so I just felt like there's a story here and and I spoke to people in Cheltenham and a lot of people don't know the history of the town it's all it's not as obvious as somewhere like Bath for example um and so I just really felt like one you know finding out more about it myself and you know on my social media accounts I'll often talk about history and people people are fascinated so I just felt like well I need to write a story here um and then I just had to do it you know I just once you started something I just sort of felt like well really felt I had to finish it and like I say really enjoyed it so how long did it take um from about Christmas to September so nine months and I'd started a novel previously which was set in the Victorian era which was based on a a lady who'd come to Cheltenham to visit Cavendish house and um you know I that that, I wrote about three chapters of that, but it just sort of fizzled out. And so then I 
started researching the race course history and I just felt that was a lot more dramatic and and I so I went went right back to the Regency times you know the, the boom really of, in Cheltenham um and that just kept going so it just felt like there was more more of a story so yeah about nine months and um during lockdown really <laughs> yeah so that date of 1827 was that particularly significant I mean um was the spa up and running by then I assume it was um yeah, so 1827 is actually the date of um, the sermon. And okay. um, yeah, some of the other dates um, I, I kind of put near that, but a lot of it is, is, is heavily factual. Um, mm. So yeah, this, the, the, the town was kind of put on the map when George the first, George the third visited in 1788. And yeah. um, you know once a king or a queen visits a town then it suddenly becomes very fashionable and so from seven eight 1788 onwards um the Cheltenham became very popular and the beginning of the 1800s in particular there was a building boom and, and obviously lots of speculators came and took advantage of the popularity of the town and obviously all the money coming into the town and um and so so yeah 1827 was probably you know just past the peak um mm. once we get to the 1830s all these speculators perhaps started running out of money and as we know sort of joseph pitt um never never realized his, his full dream of um uh, uh, but, but obviously yeah pitville park and pitville pump rooms is all there but he was probably coming it was probably coming to the end of its um spa mm. boom there because queen victoria liked to sea bathe so no, sure. yeah. once queen victoria was <laughs> going to the seaside then obviously everybody else followed. Yeah. Is there much left of that? I mean you mentioned Pitville Park and the pump room. Um, is there much else left of the of that apart from the wonderful regions, the architecture of course, but the actual spa itself, is there much left of that sort of industry to, to use that word? No, no, there isn't, which is unfortunate. But I well, unfortunate I guess it's obvious because people didn't, you know, don't take the waters anymore for health, do they? So no, there's not much left at all, which is a shame. And I and I think, you know, a lot of people lament that, um, including myself, but I kind of understand that it was such a brief period in Cheltenham's history that perhaps it wasn't as valued as other places like, mm. like Bath and Buc Buxton, where I'm visiting Buxton, next yeah. week. You yeah. know, it was, just wasn't as established. So there were a number of spas in the town. The main one was the Royal Well, which is now underneath the Cheltenham Ladies College. The yeah. Montpellier Spa was is now the Ivy. Um, and there were a number of spas dotted across the town, which have which mm. gone um, because, you know, perhaps it just, perhaps they just weren't valued and there was no money in it. And, mm. and then the 1960s came along and, you know, there, there was a desire for a completely different kind of modern architecture so there are a number of reasons why Cheltenham perhaps didn't keep its spa history the only place you could take the waters until quite recently was the Pitfall pump room yeah. um, but obviously Covid put a stop to that yeah. um, and I don't know what the plans are future plans but, but it would did you well. take it did you I take just, it before I did drink it yeah a few years ago and it tasted and? horrible <laughs> it tastes horrible <laughs> but you know for a tourist attraction yeah it's quite exciting isn't it and um, I think so I think it's worth capitalising on, like other places, Buxton, for example. Yeah, yes. Well, hopefully it'll come back. Um, yeah. Can we just sort of do a bit of housekeeping? Because my understanding is that you're a, actually a journalist, um, grew up in Bristol? Yeah, so I'm, I'm Bristolian and um, I was a journalist for three years. So, yeah, I've always kind of had that nose for a story and, and I know, you know, I know what, what, is isn't that I know there's always has to be an angle on something and hmm. um I guess at the same time you know this is a self-published book so I'm aware of how to how to market my own you know product really um yeah. with a sort of you know a, a realistic view on 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 the fact that it's not you know it wasn't taken up by any agents perhaps I don't you know perhaps because it's not it doesn't neatly fit into a particular genre perhaps because they thought it was only going to appeal to Cheltenham people but I do feel like there's been a sort of I haven't been going all out on the marketing of it um but I do feel like there's been a sort of just slow it's like a slow burn isn't it and I've really loved reading the reviews that have come in and uh, of course there are some some negative reviews but there are a lot of positive reviews and I'm just really enjoying um mm. sort of 
that slow burn really. And you mentioned that digital side because that's actually your business, isn't it? Now you run yeah. a digital, uh, uh, um, so you market products digitally for other people or you advise companies on their digital marketing strategy? So I manage a number of companies, uh, social media. Um, I'm moving more into Facebook ads. Um, so if you see um, an advert for something on Facebook and you and you've just been on the website and seen the product, that's a you know that's a Facebook ad that's tracking you. And there's all sorts of changes going on with privacy at the moment. But um, but yeah, you can. So for example, I did an ad on my book, and yeah. um, I so I targeted people in Cheltenham. So some of you might have seen my book on Facebook and wondered why, because it's, it's you've been served an ad. Yeah. Um, or, and I also targeted people um, worldwide, so who who were into historical fiction, or I might have I might have honed it down even more to people who perhaps like Julia Quinn, who like who wrote Bridgerton. Um, yeah. So you can you can kind of do that sort of thing. But I, I've stopped doing ads for a while because I just don't want to keep throwing money at Facebook, really. And I'm mm -hmm. sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, people have quite mixed views of Facebook, but yeah. I have them too, even though I kind of work with it every day. I'm yeah. quite aware of so um the one, couple of more questions from me uh three more actually one um uh, is there another book coming or is that it well i've i've so, sort of said no but um i just get i get really fascinated by things so you know i just think um yeah possibly but <laughs> i've got okay. quite life's quite busy really so i you know i like to give things 100 percent, and i like to just have that real passion for it if i'm going to do it so you know i would say this is this is almost a hobby you know it, yeah. i'm not you know i wouldn't it's weird sort of calling myself an author but i guess i've written a book so i am but but yeah i'm, I'm um i'm starting some walks based on the book um with the children promenaders so I'm going to I'm going to, you know, focus on that for the summer um, okay. and, you know, it might another book might come to me. Yeah, and that was the next question, because I know that uh, you're involved with the Cheltenham Promenaders. So they and do you dress up in costume or do you just wander around the, with a with a group of people? How does that work? Yeah, so I know I know the um, the guy who runs Cheltenham Promenaders, he, he's called Phil Collins and he dresses up as Henry Skillicorn, who was the founder yeah. of Cheltenham's first spa. And he he's brilliant. You know, he's he's an actor, really. And so he he's great and he knows the history. And I've been on his walks and we were talk we were talking a couple of weeks back about possibly doing putting on a Regency Festival in Cheltenham. Um, mm -hmm. But it, we, the more we talked about it, the more we thought, God, this is hard work. And, um, you know, a lot of things are an uphill struggle. And we just felt like that would be a lot of work for not much back. Um, and then we, because we sort of get on well, you know, he suggested doing a Heritage Open Day walk. So I'm doing that yeah. in September and, it, and it, that's for free. Um, and then I thought, well, I'll do some more, you know, do some in the summer that people have to pay for just to yeah. sort of practice and so yeah we I'm dressing up as Alice Elliott so I've got a Regency outfit and I was thinking oh I'm gonna feel really st stupid but once I put it on and started walking around Cheltenham I felt I felt god this feels so right you know everyone should walk around <laughs> wearing this sort of outfit and you know we got loads of attention so it, you know it was help with promoting the book and Phil's dressing up as the reverend yeah and my husband and my friend are dressing up as um Two of the rogues, and they'll they'll be pretending to get increasingly drunk as, as we go around this walk, and so it'll be oh, quite entertaining absolutely. and just yeah, quite fun. Fun, absolutely. So finally, um, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, a because they want to buy the book, which would be great because it's available on digital format as well, isn't it? Not just uh, hardback. And to hear more about these um, walks, which sound very exciting, and maybe book a place. How how what's the best way to get in touch with you? Well, to book a walk, it would be um, up on the Cheltenham Promenaders website or okay. social media very, very soon, hopefully tomorrow. Um, what day is it? And um, and then, you know, people can get in touch with me on social media. I'm on Twitter. Yeah. I'm, I'm on Instagram as Leslie Sainty. Um, and yet my email's on there as well. Wow. And yeah, it's, it's on it's for sale on Amazon and it's in Waterstones, Cheltenham and the Suffolk okay. anthology. Inchelton. Lovely job. Taking the Waters. Let's just remind people of the title. Taking the Waters by Leslie Sainty. Leslie, great to talk to you today and Thank best you. of luck with all your adventures. It sounds, as you say, a very busy and full life. So yeah. thanks for spending time with us today. Thank you very much.